What's up guys, Evil Deer here, your god, and today I'm going to teach you some Esperanto slang. Now some of the words I'm going to teach you are new, some are old, some have kind of entered mainstream, and some are very on the fringes. Now, also, since I'm teaching you slang, a lot of Esperantists are not going to like some of these words because they don't like the idea of slang in general, because you got to remember Esperanto was originally created to be a secondary language for everyone, and slang kind of goes against that ideal, but you will still see slang used a lot in Esperanto, especially amongst youth and younger speakers because slang just evolves, it just happens. And if a language grows big enough, it's gonna have slang. So let's let's learn some words now, shall we? And we're gonna do this by imagining that we're gonna to go to this random Esperanto Congress in my head. And funnily enough, I've never been to an Esperanto Congress, so I'm probably the worst person in the world to teach you slang. But anyway, the first one, when you rock up to the Congress or a meeting, let's say you enter, and there's gonna be two scenarios. You're gonna walk in, the music's gonna be pumping, you're gonna see people dancing, people are oh, going on, and you're gonna go, this is an awesome atmosphere. I love the vibe here. Or you're gonna walk in and it's gonna look like a funeral home and there'll be one person standing up at the front talking about how Esperanto is the greatest language in the world and everyone else will be asleep in a chair. It'll be one of those two, but you're gonna talk about the atmosphere. Now this is one of those words that started out, it had original meaning of say environment and atmosphere, but then it kind of adopted the secondary meaning to mean a vibe of a event, okay? So it is a toss -off. and you'll see this word Quite a lot now, even in um, big magazines and stuff like that in Esperanto, it's entered mainstream. So etoso means atmosphere of a event, okay? So if you want to say, oh yeah, it was a great vibe, a great atmosphere, you'd say bona etoso or bonega etoso, whatever. The next thing you might want to say is it's a cool event or it's an uncool event. And cool is moyosa. And you're probably going, where the hell did that word come from? Moyosa is actually... Um, three initials added into one word. It started out as Moderna Una Stilo, and then it went to Moyoso, and then Moyosa. Okay? Next word, when you go to the event, you're either going to go alone, like a loner, like me, or you're going to bring someone along, say your babe. And the word for babe is Kananyo, and it's actually um, the word Kanabino, cut down, or Kanabon, it doesn't really matter, cut down with the pet suffix Nyo, the female version added on. So you'd say, Kananyo, say, for your babe. And I think that originally first appeared in Esperanto, though I could be wrong, through Chubi Volas Danci. And that is, do you want to dance the song from um, Yomo? Next, while you're at an Esperanto event, obviously you're going to meet Esperanto speakers, Esperantistoi, Esperante Paralantoi. But you might also meet Verduloi, which is a green person, which is just another word for an Esperanto speaker because for some reason us Esperantos have a real fascination with the green colour. I think that's to do with the Irish or something like that. I remember reading an article somewhere, but don't quote me on that. You might also meet Samideano. Samideano simply translates as someone with the same idea, which is that we both speak Esperanto, so we must have similar ideals. <laughs> yeah, not always. But yeah, that's another common word you will see. Now obviously as you enter the event you're going to see experienced speakers, you're going to meet new speakers and obviously the word for a beginner of Esperanto is comenzanto, okay? That's the standard word. But you might also see the word bonantagulo, which means good day person. And the reason they do that is because it's basically just implying, and this is a little bit derogative, that you don't know how to say anything really apart from good day, my name is, blah blah blah, the most basic thing. So bonantagulo. But you might also meet a Kielvi Faratasulo, <laughs> which is exactly the same as Bonantagulo. But both of them are a little bit derogative and I avoid using those words because I don't want to make people feel bad because that's all they know how to say. But you will see them every now and then. Now obviously as a beginner responds to you, some of the things they're going to say are going to be Volopukajoi or Volopukajo. And that basically just means it's Greek to me or I don't understand, it's, it has no meaning, it's, it's senseless jibber jabber. And it's funnily enough, that's actually the Ajo, which means thing, and Volopuko, which is another created language that came before Esperanto. So Esperanto is actually used as a semi, not an insult, but to say something that doesn't make sense, we actually point to a previous <laughs> created language, how, like, how ironic is that, I suppose. Um, so while you're at the event, you're going to walk around, you're going to meet lots of different people. One of the people you might meet is a geek or which is a geek, as you know, someone who's fascinated in a particular subject and usually excels at it. You might also meet otako, which is pretty much the same as a geek, a geek or. However, they're usually the type of people that lock themselves in the room and really focus on that. They're like geek or on a hardcore scale. You might also meet nerd or, which as you could imagine means nerd. Now obviously geek or nerd or otako, they're all kind of, they can kind of all like 
merge. They're a little bit ambiguous, just like English. It's slang. It's just how it is. Every now and then you'll meet a katsula, which basically translates as dickhead. Now it's not as insulting as the English one, um, or the English use of the word. It's more kind of like playful. Uh, you'll see it a lot, katsula, all the time. Don't get insulted by it. You may also meet dando. Now dando originally is like a really old word that came from English and it's been around since the beginning of Esperanto. And every now and then its usage goes up and then it disappears and it comes up and down, up and down. It originally meant a guy who wanted to make himself look upper class. He would like um, speak with like a really upper class type of way. He'd wear like the whatever's in fashion at the time, that type of person. Now, it meant, originally meant a, a guy, but as with most Esperanto words, it's now neutral, so dan dok immediately a guy or a girl. Um, and it's someone who just cares about physical appearance and how they present themselves. You might, actually, no you won't. You will never meet this person at an Esperanto event. A misantropo. A misantropo basically is someone who avoids, at all costs, society and humans in general. If you ever see one of those people there like, they throw down their wallet and they're like, I've had enough of society, I'm gonna go buy a cabin in the woods and move there with my pet duck. That's a misantropo. And every now and then I feel like I want to be one of them, but yeah, you know, I'm gonna pay for the bill, so I can't do that. That's the standard people you're gonna meet at an event, but you might also meet cretanoi or cretano. A cretano translates as a cretin, or someone who has lower than average IQ level. Now, obviously, this can be a bit derogative, especially to people who are handicapped, so be careful how you use it. You also meet idioto, which means idiot. Um, again, someone who's stupid. Um, my personal favorite, you'll meet namputo, which is someone who acts like a child or has childish jokes or, you know, does silly little things. Kind of me. Imagine me, namputo. This is me, okay? Um, you'll also meet every now and then a bubo. And a bubo is similar to Namputo, but it's generally reserved for a child who's like kind of mischievous and stuff like that. It can be applied to an adult as well. Now, obviously, those are the normal people. No, well, not normal. That's like a whole range of people you'll meet at an event, but you'll also come against the hardcore Esperanto speakers, and we have several words for them. A voted the papo, which means a green pope. This type of person is the type of person who will stand up in front of three other Esperantists and give them a speech on why they should learn Esperanto when they all speak it already. We call them a voted de papo because they're basically preaching to the converted. There's no point trying to tell these people to learn Esperanto when they already speak it. Um, the next person you will meet is a talpo. A talpo means mole, but it has a secondary meaning of someone who overzealously promotes Esperanto, especially say to a journalist or someone like that, they'll say, you have to learn Esperanto type of thing. And generally, you only reserve this word for people who are so overzealous that it actually puts other people off of learning Esperanto, so it's kind of counterproductive. Um, you'll also see Oldulo. Now, Oldulo comes from older, which means old, the same as Maluna. Now, older, you think, comes from the English old. Well, actually, no, it comes from um, I, uh, Ido, I said Ido, which is in English, but Ido, um, which is the offshoot of Esperanto, which took it from, I'm assuming, English. So it's come from English into Ido, into Esperanto. And Oldula, although it means an old person, old person, it's generally got like a kind of a secondary meaning, which is kind of like a little bit eccentric and stuff like that. Because if you just wanted to say an old person, you'd say Malyunulo. However, if you say Oldula, you're adding that extra little bit of sense of being a little bit eccentric and stuff like that. There's a reason you're picking that word. Obviously, there's a few verbs that us as Brunners use, and for some reason, we haven't all of us had this fascination with reptiles. Now, it all started out with crocodili, which is a verb and it means to crocodile, but what it actually means is to speak your native language with someone else who also speaks your native language. Um, so I speak English with another English person in an Esperanto event when we should be speaking Esperanto because it's used kind of in a, not really derogative, but it's used in the way that you shouldn't do that because imagine if a journalist walks in and they want to do like an article on Esperanto and they see two people speaking English in an Esperanto event. Obviously it doesn't present the best like face for the language. Um, you also see alligatori which is basically to speak a foreign language, which is a native language of someone else, when you should be speaking Esperanto. Most people just use crocodili, but you also see alligatori. So for instance, say I speak Chinese, and I speak Chinese with a Chinese speaker, when I know they speak Esperanto, for whatever reason, maybe I want to practice Chinese. Someone might say, ne alligatoru. Um, the other one you'll see, which is very rare, but you will see it every now and then, is Kaimani. And that means to speak a language that no one understands. Why would you do that? But people do it, okay? So let's say I'm at an Esperanto meeting and I decide randomly to speak Mary, and no one else can speak it. 
I'm just standing here in the middle of the room like a loner, like a frenezulo, someone who's crazy. Freneza means crazy, frenezulo is someone who's crazy. So yeah, that's Kaimani. Um, and finally, every now and then you might turn around and go, where the hell's John? He's been here every single year for the last 10 years and someone will go, oh, he, for whatever reason, has um, left the movement, which is Kabei. Kabei, it means to lead the movement and it comes from the name of a famous Esperanto way back in the day who was, I believe, a native speaker of Esperanto, wrote all these awesome works and then one day just went and disappeared. So every now and then people will Kabei. And you'll also see Mal Kabe when someone leaves the movement and 10 years later decides, I'm back! Sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, I had to do some stuff. So yeah, you'll see that, and then people make jokes about it. Well, he didn't really Kabe in the first place. But that's it. That's it for Esperanto Slang. I could go on forever. There's so much more. I didn't want to cover derogative stuff in this lesson. This was just, just standard stuff. Um, so yeah, if you've liked this video, give it a like, share it around with your friends, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video, and if you're not there, well, I'll make you Kabe from this world. <laughs> and as always, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, because without them, I couldn't make this channel better and grow it into the most epic thing in the world. And they are Alexander Tolson, JZ Knuckles, Colt Arm, Sarah SC, Tommy Lindsley, Slava Shkalaya, Robert Nielsen, Lupa, and Shane Power. And if you want to donate to help me make my cha channel better, you can through the little link in the description below. Just a couple of bucks a month helps. Thanks, guys.